Hello YouTubers, Stitch Shifter here. I wanted to say hi to Margarita from the Crazy Mixed Up Quilt channel. Um, and thank everyone for the response to my How Does a Sewing Machine Work video. Over 8,000 views, or almost 9,000 views I guess, and uh, my best video ever. And uh, I figured I would do another one of these self-help teach videos uh, to try to help people with their uh, sewing machine set up and uh, you know normal questions that I get quite a bit um, I figured I'd go over the basics and uh, try to help you get your machine threaded properly and uh, um, get it running without getting into too much detail on a specific problem with a specific machine but um, Basically, your thread goes through the top, around the tensioner, through your little spring, underneath this lever. If you don't, if that pops out of there while you're sewing, that can also be a problem. If that, if that uh, thread isn't going around that, and it ends up going like this, your your uh, uptake lever won't be able to pull enough thread up, probably. So I think that's a, a problem with someone that sent a, made a video about their singer not uh, sewing right. But uh, that's why I made this video. Um, enjoy. Hope it helps you out a little bit. Hello, Margarita from the Crazy Mixed Up Quilt Channel. Bruce here, Stitch Shifter. I'm going to try to cover this fast because my video only makes little short clips. I can't upload them. Okay, this is uh, how you thread a machine. Threading the machine. This is a white 764. I want to take this through two holes on the top here because I've sewn with this and I know how it works and it needs a little extra tension. Okay, we go through the top hole. Don't get this wrapped around too many things. And then through the bottom hole. I'm going to have to break this video up in shorter little pieces. So if I can't get this going any faster. I'm gonna, okay, now you want to go through your spring tensioning discs. And then back through your spring there, that little spring, the thread goes down through that, then under that lever, and then up through the thread take up lever. That first thing not really being a lever, it's just a um, little arm that holds the thread. So there, there you go, that's the first part. Get it through the, at least one hole, through the discs, around the spring, under the lever, up to the take up thread take up lever which is this thing okay after you get it through your thread take up lever you want to bring it back down through this little loop down here everywhere there's a loop or a wire on this that's for a thread guide that's supposed to hold the thread now with the door closed your thread will go up and then way back down so there's like a big huge and what happens is when you make your thread in the or your stitch and the needle goes down through around the bottom and it starts coming back up then the thread take up lever pulls all that thread back up through the material and through the needle and makes your stitch. If it doesn't go through the thread or material easily it'll make a loop on the bottom and give you uh, this stitch with a bunch of loopy stuff out the back side like this which another machine was doing I was trying to do embroidery with. Okay now after you've got it through the discs around the spring the little arm there back up through the thread take up lever and through all the little loops going down you want to put it through your needle the older you get the stronger the glasses you need apparently and the needle on this machine has the groove to the front and the little notch on the back and a little trick I've learned is when you got your it shouldn't be too hard to put your th thread through the needle it needs to go in and out as it's sewing back and forth through there like this so if you pull your thread through and it twists and kinks and binds that's going to be a problem you're not going to get a good even stitch like that this one seems to be going right through without too much problem it's not too heavy of a thread now I got two different threads in here you're uh, you can can normally run two different size threads, but you want them somewhat equal. Um, and depending on what you're sewing, you want them the, the right thickness for your material. 
Okay, the other thing we're going to want to cover is bobbin winding. So let me pull all this thread out that I just threaded through there. And this is your bobbin winder. Now, to wind your bobbin, you want to disengage your machine. You hold the wheel and crank this little knob counterclockwise, and it'll unlock it. So as the wheel turns, or your wheel turns, it won't uh, run the machine. And what you'd want to do is you want to take your thread, the end of your thread off your spool on the back of the machine there and I'll just stick the thread through any hole I guess it doesn't matter and pop it onto the thread winder here the bobbin winder and what you do is you put this up so that this little rubber wheel engages the wheel on the machine and when you here, let me get this because this is gonna take up and start going here okay now yeah, I hold on to the thread sticking through there for a few seconds until the the thread gets wound around the bobbin enough to uh, not slip out uh, okay now you can start winding and I got that extra loop kinda long there and it's hanging out so I'm gonna come back with my scissors and cut that off because I don't want that winding over the edge of the bobbin and getting caught up in what I'm reeling on there Here take this and put this down through the loop on the bottom of the machine there's a little thing there and that's gonna keep the uh, thread spooling onto the bobbin evenly okay so our threads coming down from the bobbin up here I should pro probably put that under the handle but okay now you hit your see how that's going back and forth back and forth it's loading that pretty evenly that's kind of what you want keep barely a little tension on there and that'll load that bobbin up and when it gets full not right to the top it needs to be down just a little bit it'll it'll stop winding the thread pushes against this little chrome thing in the back and pushes the bobbin or the wheel out from there so it'll stop winding okay next thing we're going to take our bobbin that we just loaded and with the thread going in a clockwise motion winding on clockwise winding off counterclockwise we take that clockwise face and pop that into our bobbin case like that and thread the put the thread into the little notch that cuts in under this little steel tab here this little steel plate that's the thread tensioner and that little screw right there makes the tension on the bobbin thread and it should have a little pressure on there but it should only be a a couple ounces you should be able to pull that out pretty easily and then your your bobbin spins in there and that's releasing your thread for the stitch this is an oscillating hook machine if we lift this up here and this is heavy this weighs about 50 pounds inside here is the hook retainer before I yank that out let's just pull our bobbin out we pull the little lever there and that releases it from the pin pin of course is this little pin in the middle this is a hook that's in here we're going to take that out and show you that right now first out comes the retaining ring and then there's the hook now you want to check that hook rub your finger backwards on that and make sure there's no burrs or uh, uh, nicks in that because if your needle comes down and hits that um, from pulling the material through it, it'll make a nick in there and that'll split your thread and that's a problem now there's also in this one a little lint cleaner lint cleaning device that's supposed to keep the lint out of there pull that out make sure that's clean blow it blow the dust off of it and slip it back in there it all fits down inside that little ring now also on your hook you can put a little bit of oil on the edge of that because that's going to keep um, this this moving clean on not a lot of oil just barely a little bit on your fingertip and then your hook will go back into that little cradle there fit snugly down inside and then your ring will go back on there and then get latched in like that then once you do that you can just pop your bobbin right back in get the little finger in the notch on the top there just leave your bobbin thread spool out of there and then we'll take our top thread stick it under our presser foot Oop, we have to re-engage our knob on the wheel run that down and back up pull our top thread out oh and it grabbed our 
bobbin thread there so that's what we want now another quick way you can do this you don't have to don't run your machine with the presser foot down it'll run the dogs against the presser foot but if you go like this see how those threads are twisted together now those are stitches so that's actually running and stitching right now so I know that machine's working okay we've got this thing all threaded up I've got my red bobbin thread in there and my black top thread they're pretty equal in weight. the red thread is maybe a little bit lighter and you can sew with uh, unequaled threads like that a lighter thread on the bottom and a heavier one on the top you usually want to have them pretty well balanced but if you're doing an embroidery stitch you can actually run two threads on top of the double needle and a single lighter thread on the bottom because you only want to see the top thread you don't want to see the bottom so let's uh, get her started here and see let's go over to uh, get the needle up we'll change our knob over here on the machine to a zigzag on this one we have a zigzag width so we'll put that needle up and move this over to five which would be the widest and we'll try that okay let's looks like it's stitching okay okay so we lift that presser foot up pull that out i usually pull you know six eight inches of thread out of there to make sure got a lot to deal with when we start again okay not too much black thread showing underneath not too much red thread showing on the top about equal and it's a light material with a pretty tight stitch it's not puckering but it uh, looks to be uh, pretty solid uh, typically you want to use a thread that's kind of equal and balanced to your your material so you don't have a big clunky heavy uh, thread running through there it's um, you kind of want it all all evenly weighed but if you're gonna sew denim of course you want a heavier thread to uh, sew that heavier material together or if you're sewing something like leather like this you're gonna want a equally heavy here check out my big scissors these are some cool scissors J Wist and Son Newark New Jersey those are some American made scissors man they're like 14 inches long and they they cut like here this is a chunk of leather and it snips that right off but yeah if you're sewing leather you're going to want some heavier thread uh, kind of like an upholstery thread uh, to make sure that's uh, you know sewed together really well this is some really heavy thread here it's got like 15 pound test